The speaker of today is uh, Diego. Diego Dalmastro, giusto, uh, that will speak about infrared phases of two dimensional QCD. Please. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much for uh, being here and for the invitation. And indeed, I'm going to be talking about uh, this recent paper of ours with uh, my advisor, Jacques Magomi, and my collaborator, Matthew Yu, from the Perimeter Institute. And the idea is to try and say a few things about quantum chromodynamics in, in one plus one dimensions. So I'm going to begin with, yeah, with the background. Yeah, yeah. With the background. And I'm going to go a little bit fast because this is everything is, everything is known. But of course, if there is any question, please, uh, please uh, feel free to ask. OK, so one of the key questions in, in theoretical physics or in high energy particle physics or condensed matter or any uh, subject where quantum fields are used is understanding the dynamics of strongly coupled quantum field theories uh, or quantum field theories where there is no uh, small parameter where you can do perturbation theory. And for these theories, uh, you cannot do fine mind diagrams, you cannot do perturbation theory. So it's usually very, very hard to say anything at all about these theories. And the canonical example is the strong force, uh, which is an asymptotically free, uh, free force, which means that at short distances, the interactions are, are very weak. And therefore, you can do uh, perturbation theory and Feynman diagrams capture all of the information about any question that you may want to ask. But by contrast, at long distances, the, the coupling constant grows. So the theory is strongly coupled. And this is where many of the interesting questions arise. Um, by interesting both uh, from the phenomenological point of view and also from the theoretical point of view, uh, phenomenologically, because essentially throughout the history of uh, humanity, m almost every experiment has always been uh, an experiment that is low energy from the point of view of the strong force. Uh, so except at the core of uh, the LHC, LHC, everything else is uh, low energies from the point of view of the strong force. And theoretically, it's very interesting as well, because many of the long uh, standing questions and hard questions about uh, the strong force are really questions about the, the vacuum structure of the theory. So chiral symmetry breaking or confinement or or questions of, of that type. So the conclusion is that what we really want to understand is the macroscopic limit of a QCD theory or, or any um, gauge theory that is uh, asymptotically free. The usual picture that we have for this uh, question is that we begin at the UV at uh, high energies with a very simple theory of microscopic degrees of freedom, quarks and gluons, and a very, very simple uh, Lagrangian, so a kinetic term for both, and then some simple interaction. And then we run the RG flow and integrate out everything that is massive. And we end up with some uh, macroscopic low energy theory where usually um, uh, the degrees of freedom are emergent. So they, they look uh, nothing like the, what you began with uh, at high energies. And the question is, what is this uh, low energy theory for a given UV theory that you begin with? And in general, there are two things that can happen. The theory could be either gapless or gapped. And gapless means that there are massless degrees of freedom of low energies. And gap means that everything is massive. And the macroscopic behavior of the theory uh, uh, really, really depends on this uh, very sensitively. Because for a gap theory, um, the, the dynamics are almost trivial at low energies. Because any experiment that you do below the gap uh, will not have enough energy to excite your degrees of freedom. So you will get basically boring physics below the gap. Uh, but if the theory is gapless, then there is uh, interesting phenomena at any scale. Because a massless particle, you can excite it. Uh, with arbitrarily low energy. So that means that no matter how uh, low your energy is, you will have some uh, interesting dynamics. And the usual example is electromagnetism, which is a long distance interaction precisely because the photon is massive. So at real life scales, we see electromagnetism because it's uh, carried by a massless particle. And uh, uh, related to this, there is a very famous $1 million prize that you meet my, uh, you're probably familiar with, which is uh, precisely proving that Jan Milt is a gap theory. So this is an interesting but hard question in general. Uh, so here there are two, two uh, examples of, of this behavior. So on the left, we have a, a, typically, uh, a typical example of a gap theory, which is yang mills And in general, we expect that when you run the RG flow and go to the uh, long distances, you get something trivial because the theory is gap. And the dispersion relation usually looks something like this. So at the origin, we have one or more uh, isolated vacuum states, discrete vacuum states. And above then, you, if you go high uh, above the gap, you get uh, interesting uh, particles and then a continuum of, uh, of uh, continuum spectrum. And an example of a gapless theory is, for example, some quantum field theory with some spontaneously broken 
continuous symmetry because we have Goldstone theorem that tells us that whenever you have a broken symmetry, you got you have Goldstone bosons in the infrared, so that means massless particles. And for that type of theories, uh, the spectrum looks uh, like so. So the the continuum goes all the way down to the, the to zero energies to the, the origin. Uh, but of course, a gap theory doesn't need to be completely completely trivial at low uh, energies. Uh, because even though there are no propagating degrees of freedom, there are still some non-trivial degrees of freedom, which are um, carried by, in general, there could be multiple vacuum states, and they may carry topological degrees of freedom. So uh, in general, a gap theory uh, becomes a topological quantum field theory at, uh, at large distances. So it's not necessarily completely trivial. There might be several vacuum states with uh, some uh, topological degrees of freedom. And the uh, gapless quantum field theory is not always just Goldstone bosons. You may have uh, massless particles that do not come from a broken symmetry. And in fact, there are some theories that do not have any symmetries at all, and they are still gapless. So uh, in general, it's not just Goldstone. And in general, what you get is some conformal field theories. For a gapless um, theory, when you go to long distances, what you get is some, some CFD. And for a given quantum QCD theory, what we want to know is, first of all, is it gapped or is it gapless? And second of all, if it's gapped, we want to know what topological degrees of freedom there are at, um, at low energy, so which TQFT appears. And if it's gapless, what we want, want to know is what conformal field theory appears at large distances. And in three plus one dimensions, there are several systems where you can uh, at least give some partial answer to these questions. Uh, so for example, for theories without supersymmetry, there are some uh, data that comes from large N arguments or lattice or stuff like that. And you can more or less, uh, for some theories, give some uh, uh, reliable description of what happens at, at, at strong coupling. Then if you add a little more supersymmetry, you usually can do, do a little bit better. So for example, when you have n equals one, you have cyber dualities that uh, allow you to say a few things about um, strong coupling. And the higher the supersymmetry, the better are the answers. So for n equals two, you have the full machinery of cyber within theory, et cetera. In two plus one dimensions, there are also several examples where uh, you can more or less say a few things about infrared. Uh, and again, there are examples with and without supersymmetry. And in one plus one dimensions, that is what we, were, uh, we will be talking about today. So with this, uh, I'm going to move on to two-dimensional QCD. Uh, before that, are there any questions about uh, the background, the motivation, the, the type of questions we want to answer? No, oh, great. OK, so uh, two-dimensional QCD. Uh, the Lagrangian is the basic Lagrangian for QCD. It's just a kinetic term for the gluons and then kinetic term for the quarks and the, the simple uh, cubic interaction. Here, G is the coupling constant, uh, which in two dimensions it's uh, dimensionful. It, it has dimensions of mass. Then F is the field strength for um, the gauge group, so it's some group G. And finally, Psi is a spinner uh, transforming under some representation R of the gauge group. Um, and of course, there are variations and extensions of these. You can add mass terms for uh, your quarks if you want. You can add scalar fields. Uh, you can even make the, the uh, quark chiral, so the left movers and the right movers, they may transform with different uh, representations, etc. Uh, but today I'm going to uh, focus on the simplest case, which is uh, just the quarks without scalars, without mass, and with uh, uh, non chiral representations. And the main question that we want to ask is uh, given some QCD theory with some gauge group G and some representation R, is, the th is that theory gapped or is it gapless? And even more than that, we want to know what low energy effective degrees of freedom that theory has. So uh, before I try to give you the general answer, let me give you two simple examples that illustrate uh, more or less what the final answer looks like in general. So if you take, for example, uh, the QCD with gauge group, gauge group spin seven, and you add a seven dimensional quark, so a quark in the fundamental representation, that theory turns out to be uh, gapped. And below the gap, there are only two vacuum states. So they, there are two discrete vacua. By contrast, if you take the same gauge group, but you put a fermion in the eight-dimensional representation, so the spinner representation, at large distances, that theory turns out to be gapless, and it's in fact described by the Ising model. So this is more or less uh, what the answer usually looks like. So we want to do this for other gauge groups and other types of, of quark. So how do we do that? How do we do we determine the macroscopic dynamics for general group G and, and general representation R? And what we want to do is the key point is that uh, the coupling constant G in two dimensions, it's uh, dimensionful, it has positive mass dimensions. So that means that the, clue, the gluon kinetic term, it's classically relevant. It doesn't matter in the infrared. 
And the key assumption, assumption that I'm going to make today is that this is also true quantum mechanically. So I'm, I'm going to assume that quantum effects do not change the coupling constant from having positive mass dimension to zero or negative. It's, they're not strong enough to change that. So under that, that assumption, um, means that it means that the gluon kinetic term is infrared uh, irrelevant. So we won't really care about that. And the intuition uh, as to why that might be true is that in two dimensions, gluon, uh, gluons would not really propagate because there is not enough room in two dimensions for, for gauge particles to propagate. And this assumption has been studied uh, a lot of times throughout uh, the literature. And there are many, many reasons to believe that it is in fact correct. And there is, in fact, a refinement of, a, of this idea is that uh, if you write the, the Hamiltonian of QCD and you go carefully through the usual uh, issues of gauge fixing and then making sure that the Hamiltonian is well defined by giving an appropriate order in prescription, et cetera, you can check that that Hamiltonian contains a term that is quadratic in the gauge field. So uh, that gives uh, a mass to the gluon. So that's uh, another way of uh, understanding why the, the, the gluons do not really matter in infrared. But anyway. And the, under this assumption, uh, that means that the low energy dynamics of QCD are entirely captured by the fermion kinetic term. So the, the gluon kinetic term doesn't matter in it, right? You can just drop it and just keep the, the fermionic part of the, the Lagrangian. And that is what matters at low energy. And this is useful because this effective Lagrangian turns out to be a rational CFT. So uh, we have um, some tools that are specific to conformal field theories. So that means that we will have uh, more powerful tools to, to study QCD. And what is the CFT for, for this effective Lagrangian? The first step to, to see that is that take just the free fermions. So before we uh, do the gauging and free fermions, they are known to be dual to uh, a West Zumino witten model. So uh, this is the usual uh, bosonization and fermionization in two dimensions. Fermions can be written as a, as a West Zumino witten model. So this is just a, a nonlinear sigma model over, over the group manifold uh, SO. And now we gauge the symmetry G. So we take the free fermions and gauge how the, the, the G symmetry inside uh, SO. And that, that way, what you get is a gauge West Zumino Witten. So we begin with a free fermion, which is a regular West Zumino Witten. And we gauge the group G. And we gauge, in this way, we get the gauge West Zumino Witten, which is given by this expression here. The, the, the quotient means a gauge in my G. And the level here is uh, called the embedding index of G inside SO. And it's a group theory factor that depends on the gauge group and the representation R. Uh, and this gauged West Zumino Witten model is a well known example of a rational CFT. So it's, it's been studied in the literature. Uh, for example, you can use this affective description of uh, low energy QCD uh, to figure out whether QCD is gapped or, or not. And the way we do that is that a unitary CFT in general, it is trivial if and only if its energy momentum tensor is zero. So in this sense, QCD is uh, gapped if and only if the energy momentum tensor of this uh, gauge WZW model is uh, zero. And vanishing of the energy momentum tensor in a conformal theory, it defines what people usually call a conformal embedding. A conformal embedding is by definition uh, a quotient that has trivial energy momentum tensor. So in this sense, we can say that the set of gapped QCD theories is in bijection with conformal embeddings of uh, groups G into the orthogonal group. And luckily for us, uh, conformal embeddings have been classified. People looked at uh, uh, quotients of West Zumino Witten theories in the past, mm -hmm. and they gave, yeah. Sorry, what is IR, the index of G? It's I, a, yeah, it's called the embedding index of G inside O. So it's the, the quadratic index of the quarks. So uh, maybe I could write down the blackboard. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be this. Okay. No, don't use that chalk that you start. Use that chalk. So given some representation R um, of the index can be defined as, for example, C, the trace of C A. Okay, so it's the quadratic index of, of the, the the representation. This is called the the Why should come uh, as the level of the group? The because level because that's the index that stands for the level of, of the yeah the level algebra. of the mm -hmm. yeah that's right. how comes this 
uh, well, um, it will be clear later. So, uh, okay, let me see. Mm. Okay, so there is a theorem that if a group G embeds inside another group H, then the, the um, let me think, uh, then the, uh, as chiral algebra, so as uh, well zoom in within theories, um, G K embeds inside H K prime, if K is equal to K prime times the embedding So here, uh, the the orthogonal group has index one. So that means that the denominator has index uh, equal to i. Yes, I think there is. Is it always true that the uh, G is a subgroup of SO dim R, or you have uh, some? Uh... No, it is always true. Yes, if because if you have some fermion in representation R of G, that means that G embeds oh. into the orthogonal group of the dimension of the fermion. Because uh, like the representation this... gives you the embedding in a sense. The representation is a map from G to. Yeah, well, I was thinking about the fundamental representation, but when you say it's non-chiral, that's the the trick, right? I guess. Yes, but I wouldn't say that S U N embeds in S O N, but. Uh... Well, I think no, it's SO2N, that's what you're saying. Yes, right? here the dimension is the real representation. Yeah, so if the representation okay. is complex, there's a factor of two. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, these are uh, unitary representations of a semi simple group. Yes. Well, no, no, they're not always faithful. No. Well, the trivial representation, that means uh, that would be like. SO of one divided by trivial group. So that's one fermion, which is correct. Um, I don't know if you need the microphone because, uh, well, anyway, because I, I could. No, no, yes. Uh, when it's not faithful, I mean, there are some. Uh... No, so yes, um, that's, that's correct. So th there is uh, an interesting story there, but I didn't want to get into that. But in general, when, when the representation is not faithful, that means that the theory has a one form symmetry, and that gives you something interesting in the in the theory. Then the, the gauge was, you know, Witten sees that as well. So the, the theory acquires one form symmetry. So indeed, when the embedding is not faithful, there are some extra ingredients uh, that one needs to be careful about. Okay, uh, let's keep going, okay? Okay. The, I think the, with the example, this will be more clear what- uh, Yeah, probably, yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so as I was saying, the, the, the set of uh, gap QCD theories is in bijections with conformal embeddings because conformal embeddings are by definition uh, quotients with trivial energy momentum tensor, so they, they define a trivial CFT. And luckily, uh, conformal embeddings have been classified. So by looking at the classification of conformal embeddings, we can get for free the classification of gapped uh, QCD theories. So by looking at the classification, we get, and I'm gonna give you the list, so for example, if you take any gauge group G and Fermi's in the algebraic representations, uh, those two define a, a conformal embedding. So that means that that theory is gapped. And similarly, if you take the product of two groups and Fermi's in the bifundamental representation, that's, that again gives you a conformal embedding. So again, a gap gives you the theory. And similar for the rank two representations so the symmetric and anti-symmetric representations. And then there are a few a finite list of uh, exceptional cases. For example, the, the, the spin, spin nine with a Fermi in the spinner. And there are like 10 exceptions like, uh, like so that do not form part of a family. And finally, if you take combinations, again, combinations of gap theories gives you another gap theory. So this is the list of all the QCD theories that are gapped. And any theory that is not in the list, that theory will not be gapped. That will be a gap theory. An important remark here is that uh, I, I uh, gave you this classification uh, by using the gauge was you know, within description of QCD. And this gauge was you know, with description was derived under the assumption that the gluon kinetic term is irrelevant. And this is a very reasonable assumption and you can actually prove it in some simple cases, but it may turn out to be a wrong assumption. And, it, and it, it's interesting to, to say that uh, 
even if this assumption turns out to be wrong and the West Zoomino, the gauge West Zoomino Witten uh, effective description is not a good effective description of QCD, there are still some aspects uh, of QCD that can be captured by the gauge West Zoomino Witten theory. For example, the classification of, of gap theories turns out to be, it turns out, it, it turns out that it's uh, still correct even if the assumption is not correct and one has to give a more, uh, a longer argument that doesn't go through the gauge West Zoomino Witten. Uh, but the rough idea is that uh, in the full QCD theory, you can still define uh, an operator that takes the form of the energy momentum tensor of the, of the quotient. And you can show that that operator in the full QCD theory still creates massless uh, states. So if that uh, operator is non-trivial, the theory will have massless states, so that theory will be gapped. So the only way to get a gap theory is that uh, this operator T of uh, the uh, gauge WZW is identically zero. And the vanishing of an energy momentum tensor defines a conformal embedding. So by giving a more indirect argument, you can show that the condition of T being zero, it, it is still correct, even if the assumption that the gluon kinetic term uh, is relevant turns out to be wrong. There are other aspects of QCD that are still correct, even if the assumption is uh, not correct. For example, you can show that all the symmetries and anomalies of QCD, uh, in both perturbative and non-perturbative, they are still captured by the gauge West Zoomino Witten uh, model, um, even if the assumption is not correct. And finally, uh, you can even show that uh, some of the non-invertible symmetries of the theory uh, are also captured by the model. And this was uh, discussed um, yeah, in a lot of detail by uh, Omori uh, last week. Okay, so here is a summary of uh, the discussion so far. We were trying to see when a QCD theory with some gauge group G and some representation R is gap and what happens at uh, large distances. And the claim is that at uh, long distances, the effective description is given by this gauge WZW model. And that means that QCD is gap if and only if this gauge WZW model is gap. Uh, and that is true if and only if its energy momentum tensor vanishes. And that defines uh, what a conformal embedding is. But conformal embeddings are classified. So that means that there is a list of gap QCD theories. Okay, so I'm gonna move on now to some more dynamical questions about QCD. Uh, before I do that, are there any other questions? Okay, yeah, there is. I just have a non-technical uh, question. So the classification of these uh, uh, things was probably known for like some 20 years, I assume. Yes. Like, so what is anything that prevented this classification of to the being done? For? Um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a disconnection between QCD people and CFT people. Like, I don't know, huh? people that were really into the hardcore classification of uh, rational CFTs. Maybe they didn't care about QCD theories very much. Um, yeah, I have no idea. No, uh -huh. I don't know. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to check. You know, uh, whether yeah, what what part of this was uh, accessible to people in the classical literature in the eighties? Okay, most of it. Okay. Uh, I also have a. I mean, uh, not so. Com uh, well, I will formulate the question later because I have to think about it. Please go on. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna move on now to some more. Uh, specific questions about the um, large distance uh, effective uh, description of QCD beyond just the classification of whether it's gap or gapless. I wanna know more specifically uh, what happens in the infrared. Uh, I to my question. Okay. <laughs> so the argument you gave before that uh, the theory is gapped because in this quotient you get basically a central charge about to zero, yes. okay? Okay, it, it is gapped, but could be non-trivial. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so it's gonna be usually non-trivial, yes. Ah, okay. So it's gap, it has some a multiple vacua with topological degrees of freedom. There is a gap between okay, the vacua so, and okay, excitations, okay. but it's- So this is not ex excluded by no, your no, argument. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yes. Okay, it's coming, okay, thank you. Okay, so we have uh, explained how this uh, gauge West Zumino Witten model captures the macroscopic dynamics, dynamics of, of QCD with some gauge group G and some representation R. And uh, this effective, theory describes the infrared TFT for gapless theories and the infrared TQFT for gapped ones. In other words, it contains the, the, the information about the massless particles for theories that contains massless, massless particles and the information about how these massless particles interact. 
And it also contains the topological degrees of freedom of these theories, or theories that contain topological degrees of freedom, and, and also all the, the information about uh, these uh, vacuum states. But in order to extract uh, these degrees of freedom more explicitly, uh, we need to understand gauge whether some you know with models a little bit uh, better. So I'm going to give you a very, very rough uh, review of how people think about gauge with you know with theories in practice. And of course, uh, this is a vast subject, so I'm going to just spend one or two slides. So it's going to be very schematic. Uh, but here is the, the the essence of it. So there is a very uh, explicit algebraic description of gauge with you know with models, uh, which goes under the name of the Goddard Goddard Kent Olive coset construction, so the uh, GKO coset construction. And it, it deals with generic um, CFTs that can be written as the quotient of, of two rational CFTs. So if you have two, two rational CFTs, A and B, you can take the quotient of these two theories, and that way you get a uh, GKO coset. And the way to, to extract the degrees of freedom of cosets of this form uh, uh, is by computing the so-called uh, branching functions of the coset. So the, the branching functions are given by these functions, chi A, B, and they are defined by the coefficients of the of this expansion here. So the idea is that you take the chiral characters chi a of the, your your numerator theory a, and you take the chiral characters of your denominator theory b, so chi, uh, chi b. And what you do is you take the, the the characters of a, you expand them expand them as linear combinations of the characters of b, and the coefficients of of this expansion uh, gives you uh, the branching functions the 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 the, the, the branching functions here a uh, chi a b. Uh, which are the, become the characters of your, your quotient theory. And here Q is the modular parameter of the torus. So it's just e to the 2 pi i tau. If, if you are dealing with a, a, um, a quotient that is gapped, so that means a, a theory with trivial energy momentum tensor, then these characters here, these branching functions, the coefficient, uh, they uh, become just uh, integers. They are Q independent, and they give you the number of, uh, they count the vacuum of your, your theory. So it will give you the, the quotient will become some TQ of T and the number of vacuum states is given is counted by these uh, functions here. If the theory is gapless, then uh, the characters here, the coefficient will depend on Q and you can expand it in, pa in power series of Q and then the coefficient of a given power, it will count the number of states at that energy. So these uh, coefficients here, they capture all the information about your quotient. And more generally, you can compute the full modular data of your, your coset and other properties that you might be interested in, like scaling dimensions of operators. Yes? I think so. Um, I haven't really thought about that. I would expect that, yes. Uh, I mean, so, so it isn't exactly more definition than you'd expect it. It's a very tuned, right, to end up on a rational point. Yes. Uh, uh, so how does that fit in with the picture? So some other questions something non-rational. Yeah, probably. Um, well, that's not something I really have thought about, so I okay. don't really have anything intelligent to say right now. Okay. But um, I, I would assume that the answer is that it prob there might be some examples where that is, that is true. But yeah, sorry, I don't have anything specific to say. OK, so. Uh, given the, con the construction also gives you all the, the modular properties of your theory, OPEs, quantum numbers and their var various symmetries, etc. So all the information about the, the infrared dynamics that you might care about are captured by uh, the construction. So that way, given any QCD theory that you want to know about, just take the compute the characters of the numerator, compute the characters of the denominator, expand the numerator in terms of the denominator, and just identify the coefficients, and that gives you information about the uh, large distance theory. And for a general QCD theory, the macroscopic degrees of freedom will be captured by the branching functions of the embedding of G into SO. So let me give you a couple of examples of what this uh, looks like. Uh, for example, there is a model that has received uh, a lot of attention recently, which is uh, adjunct QCD. That means QCD with uh, a quark in the adjunct representation. And this is very, very close to being supersymmetric, although it's not, but it's, it's, it's near uh, supersymmetry. And the theory, this theory, adjunct QCD, is, not, is known to be gapped. Uh, this has been known since uh, the 90s by other uh, different arguments. For example, it was seen numerically. And uh, this class of theories uh, is described by this concept here. So it's the orthogonal group of the dimension of the adjunct, which is just the dimension of the group. 
divided by G at level H, where H is the index of the adjoint representation. And this coset describes a TQFT. So it has zero central charge, so indeed it's a trivial TFT, but it's not a trivial theory. So it has non-trivial branching, uh, branching functions. Uh, and the branching functions of, of the, these, this type of coset was studied in the 80s. And for example, uh, one can show that it has uh, two to the rank of the group, many uh, discrete vacuum states. So in general, it has multiple vacua, in fact, an exponentially large number of vacuum states. Uh, so it's a it's a non-trivial TQFT, but it's it, it's gapped. So it's 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 a trivial CFT, but a non-trivial TQFT. And one can extract uh, lots of of interesting physics from this coset, and this was discussed in in Omori's talk uh, last week. Another fun example is SU two. So the first uh, two non-trivial real representations are the three-dimensional representation and the five-dimensional representation, and these are both in the list that I wrote before. So that means that these two theories are gapped. Yes. The number of what? Here. So more adjoint, more, more, more copies of the, yes, that, that, uh, you can do that, but in, in general, it will not be gapped. It, it, it's, gap, it's a gapless theory. Yes. So only one copy of the adjoint is a gap theory. For more, it's, it's gapped. And it has been studied, there are some, in the literature, some people that looked at two copies of the adjoint. And there are some fun things that happen there. There is emergent supersymmetry, for example, and stuff like that. So it, it's, a, it's a cute model, but it's not gapped. Yeah. So only, only one copy is the, the gapped one. OK, so for SU2, the first two real representations, they are both in the list. So they are gap theories. And the, the next one, uh, the next real representation is the seven dimensional. And that's not in the list. So that means that that theory is gapless. And this one is a fun theory because uh, the, the massless particles of this gapless theory is described by this coset here. And you can actually show that this coset is really the tricritical easing model. So it's the uh, C equals seven over 10 uh, minimal model. Uh, um, well, it's the fermionic version of that model. And you can show that in this case, the branching functions are just via Soros super characters. So in this case, you can uh, say a few things more, more uh, yeah. explicitly than in other cases because the, the minimal models have been studied uh, a lot. So for example, you can just enumerate the infrared operators. There are four bosonic operators and four fermionic operators. And any property that you might care about, uh, they are perfectly well understood. All these scaling dimensions, OPEs, et cetera. So any property of, of SU2 with a fermion in the seven dimensional representation, it's, it's completely solved. So uh, at large distances, you can, any question that you can uh, ask, it's basically, you can answer it explicitly. I think there is a question. Yeah. So the yes, yes. I've been trying to, and I don't have a good answer. No, I don't think you can see that. But maybe I mean I have. I hope that you can, but I haven't been able to. I think we do, yes. But we that that's some, that's something we were studying right now. I, I think the answer is yes, but. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it um, might be one of the, you can write down a quartic term in the fermions. And if you add that to the UV, you break it into the uh, easing model. I think so, yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, as he was saying that the flows of, of minimal models are well understood as well. So you can do uh, stuff like that where you deform your theory and see where it lands you. And it's a very fun story there. But we are still studying, so uh, I don't have any anything super specific to say about that now. Okay, so uh, finally, another very fun example uh, is the uh, what people call the Etoff model, which is just um, uh, gauge theory with some group some group G, and you put uh, NF quarks in the fundamental representation. So you take any number of copies of fundamental quarks, and generically, these uh, these models are not in the list. And there are two exceptions, which is the orthogonal group or the unitary group, and one copy of the, uh, of the fundamental representation. So those two examples are gapped. But any other theory, so you put more quarks or change the gauge group, and they are all gapless. And uh, given the general argument, the infrared degrees of freedom are given by this concept here. So it's the orthogonal group of the dimension of the representation. 
So it's just the number of flavors times the number of colors times an integer here that depends on whether the quarks are real or, or complex. So it's one for orthogonal groups, two for unitary groups because they, they are complex, and four for the symplectic groups because they are pseudo real. And then you divide by the by the gauge group. And it turns out that this cosec here has a more uh, traditional uh, presentation because you can use uh, level rank dualities of, of chiral algebras to show that this cosec has can be written as uh, an ungaged Wells Domino Witten model. So it's a model for gauge for a target space H, where H is the orthogonal group for orthogonal, uh, if you begin with something orthogonal upstairs, so or UN if you begin with something unitary, or SP if you begin with something, something symplectic. And this is just the flavor symmetry of the gauge theory. So in this sense, uh, you can say that uh, if you begin with fundamental quarks upstairs, the low energy description is just the uh, West Zumino Witten model for the flavor symmetry. There is nothing more and nothing less. It's just the flavor symmetry. And in fact, this uh, uh, infrared CFT HN is the minimal CFT that uh, matches all the etoft anomalies for the flavor symmetry upstairs. So it's the most natural scenario. So even without everything I've said today, you could have guessed that this is the, the large distance description of, of uh, these models because it's the minimal CFT that matches all the anomalies. So in this sense, this is kind of like a very consistent picture because uh, the, the full story gives you the natural answer that you would have expected anyway. Okay, so here's the summary of the three uh, examples that I just gave you. G with an adjoint fermion, there is a gap theory. There are exponentially many vacuum states and uh, you can compute all the quantum numbers of these vacuum states and stuff like that on the topological properties. If you begin with SU2 with a seven dimensional uh, quark, what you get is the tricritical easing CFT, and that's a gapless theory. And if you begin with G with um, NF fundamental quarks, what you get is a gapless theory, which is just the WZW model for the flavor symmetry. And let me uh, give you a summary of everything that uh, I talked today. So our, our initial goal was to understand the low energy dynamics of uh, two dimensional one plus one dimensional QCD. Uh, and in the low energy limit, uh, the theory is strongly coupled. So this is where we expect that there is emergent phenomena and um, degrees of freedom that are usually very, very hard to uh, figure out just by knowing what the theory looks like uh, in the UV because you, uh, everything gets uh, reshuffled and, and it's a very uh, non-perturbative uh, phenomena. And we gave a classification of the gauge groups and, and quarks that give you a gap theory and any theory that's not in the list will be uh, will give you a gapless theory. And we identify the low energy degrees of freedom of an arbitrary theory, uh, which takes the form of a CFT for gapless theories and a TQFT for uh, gapped ones. Uh, the, this low energy theory was written in the form of a gauge with Zumino Witten of the form uh, the orthogonal group divided by the gauge group G. And this is in general a rational CFT. So that means that is why we were able to, to really say something because rational CFTs are uh, much better understood than other theories. And occasionally this concept and uh, this gauge was Zumino Witten, uh, you can write it as more traditional CFTs. For example, you can show that sometimes it becomes a minimal model or an engaged was Zumino Witten. And I gave you a couple of examples where that happens. For other theories where you cannot really simplify, you have to work with the full gauge was Zumino Witten theory, where the um, co-set construction gives you all the information that uh, you might be, be interested in. And dynamical properties of QCD can be extracted from this uh, rational CFT, from this gauge West Domino Witten model. For example, critical exponents of your operators and your OPs and stuff like that. You can extract everything from, from the, the model. And it turns out that you can go in the opposite direction as well. So there are some properties of, of um, the theory that are very transparent in the UV, but they are more obscure in the CFT. But given that these two, these two theories are connected by an RG flow, then that means that those properties are shared. For example, there are many uh, non-perturbative anomalies that are uh, easy to determine upstairs, but it might be, might be tricky to compute them downstairs. But this predicts that those CFTs that appear downstairs, they have to have the same uh, non-perturbative anomalies. So for example, QCD is very easy to show that it's invariant under time reversal. So that means that the CFTs that appear downstairs, they have to be invariant under time reversal as well. And time reversal could have non-perturbative anomalies. So that means that these CFTs that appear downstairs, they have to have these non-perturbative anomalies as well. And then you can show that that is indeed correct, but it's something that is not very obvious in the CFT. So you can use this uh, in both directions. You can use the CFT to learn about QCD and you can use QCD to learn something about 
the CFD. Uh, anyway, that's all I have uh, today. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, okay. So uh, going going back to Jordy's question, so he was asking about this flow from from uh, tricritical to, yeah. to Ising, uh, and and you said that there's this quartic fermion maybe in the UV uh, that flows to the I guess the relevant deformation of the tricritical that takes you yeah. to Ising. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious, are there examples of sort of dangerously irrelevant perturbations in the UV, like higher powers of fermions, you know, higher than dimension two that flow to something relevant? Uh, and if so, does that suggest anything about the self consistency of assuming Things about the I don't know. Uh, that's something that we're we're really looking into right now. But mm -hmm. I don't really have. That's a very interesting question, and we're trying to figure out that, that out. But I, I, that's not something we have been able to really get a nice answer yet. So you briefly mentioned this, but uh, is there is there some obvious way that your thing connects with? Uh, results in large uh, QCD, like presumably something that can also be solved using other methods. Yes. The top limit in 2D. So have, have you gone in that direction? Yes, yes, we are, we are, we're also looking into that. So there are some some cases where the, we can do the large gen in, uh, under control and everything seems to match very well. So and that's very encouraging. Uh, but yes, uh, that's again, something that we are currently uh, studying. Yes, it seems to work nicely, but uh, it's not. Uh, we don't have like a super good answer yet. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, so I have one question. Uh, so when you impose the vanishing of, of the stress tensor so to get the central charge, mm -hmm. you say something about the chiral alpha of the theory, no? Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, I don't know if this is it's the case here, but sometimes there are many ways to construct CFTs when you glue the chiral alphas, no? Yes. So your construction also tells you which uh, of the possibility if there are if there is more than one is for some of these models yes so we think that in for qcd theories of this form you always get the diagonal one uh -huh. uh, and we checked in some examples and that seems to be the, the the only one that makes sense but it could be that some example it's not but that would be a little bit weird to me uh, no no yeah it, it but i think it's the diagonal it be weird yes it, it yeah. just was wondering mm -hmm. and uh, okay and i would like to know what the interpretation is of the non diagonal maybe it has a nice interpretation from the qcd point of view but I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe it doesn't. It's just I don't know. I don't know. Just to understand because I didn't know where it ca it came mm -hmm. out. And another thing, you can also add the theta term, you know, for some uh, choices of the gauge group. Uh, yeah. Do you know if that does anything in yes. the TFIR? So uh, in two dimensions, the theta term is just the, the trace of f. Yeah. So for semi simple groups, that that's zero. So you only can add theta terms for u one factors. Mm -hmm. And sure. you can show there is a, an ABJ anomaly similar to the four dimensional one that makes it unphysical, so you can set it to zero as well. Oh, okay. So the theta terms are, are not uh, okay, a, are, a real parameter of QCD. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is mainly my ignorance, but uh, in G plus NF fundamental, yes. you said you had that opt anomalies. Yes. Didn't that already imply that it was a gapless phase? Yes, yes. So there are many, many theories where etop anomalies are enough to show that it's definitely gapless. Uh, but there are some theories that do not have uh, symmetry, so th those may or may oh, not be. Okay, okay, okay. But yes, for so, this theory in particular, yes. For that this, that so already. Also in two dimensions, the Coleman Grossman theorem applies. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Yes. So there is um, in the full um, classification of gap theories. One of the conditions is that there there must be no flavor symmetries at all, continuous flavor symmetries at all, because the net of anomaly would be inconsistent with it being uh, gapped. And it's nice that for the the, the all the theories that are gapped in the list, there they, uh, none of them has a flavor symmetry, which is not always obvious because some of them it looks like they do have. So I have. So here is the full list of all the 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 theories that are gapped. And indeed, because of uh, a top, a top anomaly matching, none of these theories can have a, a continuous flavor symmetry. And some of them, for example, the UN theories, it looks like they have a U1 uh, 
flavor symmetry because it's a complex fermion, but it turns out it's not a, a true flavor symmetry because the group has a U1 gauge group and the U1 gauge group kills the U1 flavor group because of a mixed anomaly. So all these theories, none of them has any flavor symmetry, which is consistent with the, the Atox matchup. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are there cases where you have a discrete symmetry yes. that, that is matched by a, by yes. a CQC? Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, QCD in general has uh, several, at least there are two discrete uh, the symmetries which are very universal. And one of them is time reversal. In general, they are, they are always invariant under time reversal. And there is a chiral symmetry, which is uh, like uh, just the, the left movers, you change the sign. So you send psi left to minus psi left. Those two discrete symmetries are very, very universal. And indeed the, the infrared mass match the anomalies. And you can show that in general, it always does, but then you can uh, take a specific examples and, and do the brute force computation and, and everything works uh, very nicely. So yeah, yeah, the, the discrete and symmetries are, are part of the story too. Thank you, thanks. I have two questions. So first question in, in the case when you have a gap theory, uh, so you get some two-dimensional TFT, and uh, so in general, the two-dimensional TFT is described as Frobenius algebras. Is mm -hmm. some easy way to describe what is a Frobenius algebra that we get here? Yeah, I would love. Uh, I, think I haven't been able to find in the literature the answer, so uh, uh, and I haven't been able to figure out myself. But I think it should be possible, given the gauge was you know, within description, to extract from them the Frobenius algebra. But I haven't seen anyone doing that, so I don't know. I hope that the answer is yes. But, okay, thank you. And the second question, uh, yeah, can you comment a bit more about uh, this case when the representation is not graceful and so you don't have uh, this, okay, you have a map from G to ASO, but it's not uh, injected map. So yes. Not, not the, so, so what uh, happens? In, in general, the problem is that uh, the, the center of G uh, will not be contained in the center of, of SO. Uh, so uh, it's, it's um, that is where most of the non-faithful comes from. So there are representations that do not, um, they are not um, they are not charged under part of the center of the gauge, gauge group so that means that those theories have a one form symmetry and the, the one form symmetry um, uh, has some funny properties in two dimensions so for example if you have a gauge with you know, within model which with a one form symmetry that theory breaks up into multiple different theories uh, where the one form symmetry act uh, like the one form symmetry um, uh, breaks up your theory into sub theories, which are they are well defined by themselves. So that that's that's what usually happens uh, in, in in for these theories when the 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 embedding is not faithful. It's it's really a statement that there is a non-trivial one form symmetry for the theory. And they, both the UV theory and the infrared theory they both capture the the same fact, which is that theories with a one form symmetry break into different sectors. Thank you. Sorry? When the theory doesn't have one, one form symmetry, there is only one universe. When it does have a one form symmetry, it breaks into different universe. And both the UV and the infrared break up into multiple universes. You mean finite gate? Um, yes. hmm, I didn't think about that. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So can you extend this to uh, finite gauge groups? Because some people would argue there are also exa examples of Lie groups, etc., and so on. Mm -hmm. mm, I would hope. Well, first of all, I. Okay, there is one obstruction to me, which is that I don't know how to define the embedding index of a discrete group, uh, the equivalent of IR for a discrete group. I don't know how to define that. So that means I don't have a very good. Uh... Sorry? Anyway, I didn't think about that, but my hope is, but I would hope that the answer is that that can be tackled as well using similar methods. But it's not completely obvious to me how to do it uh, right now. Yeah. 
several cosets or mm -hmm. something like that of these groups. Can you say something about uh, the topological theory you get uh, when there are gaps, or uh, or maybe give an example of of the answer you gave to Pavel before? Uh, yes. So for okay. So for. So for a general coset in general, you, what you have to do is compute the characters of A, the characters of B, and expand the characters of A as linear combinations of the characters of B. When the theory is gapped, that means that the coefficients will be independent of Q. So they will just be integers. So that means that the characters of A are just an, an integral linear combinations of the characters of B. That is the general uh, structure of a gap theory. It's just a, uh, it's a TQFT because it has uh, a finite dimensional Hilbert space, and the dimension is just th these coefficients here, the coefficients. So, uh, and you can work that in, in specific examples, like, I don't know. Um, so for example, I, if you take SU2, that's the other representation, this is gap. And for this theory, uh, the, the uh, okay, so this is uh, SO3 level one, because this is the dimension of the adjoint, and then you have SU2 level two. And you can write down the, the characters of the numerator. There are three characters. There is the NS, NS, the NS, R, and the R, NS. Yeah, okay. that I know. But uh, what is the, th the topological theory? So what is... Uh, you mean how to extract the Frobenius algebra from that? Yes. How... Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Yes, uh -huh. no. That, that's something that... Uh, Given the, the quotient, going from the quotient to a Frobenius algebra, that's not something that have, has been described in the literature as far as I'm aware. Uh -huh. and that's not something that I've been able to figure out by myself either. What is the Frobenius algebra? The Frobenius algebra is a, well, it's an algebraic object that captures the, the two dimensional TKFTs are, are classified by Frobenius algebra. So it's a, a, it's a form of structure with an associate or a co associator. So it's an abstract nonsense, but uh, it's basically a. a a set of data that captures the TKFT. It's similar to a, a modular tensor category in three dimensions, which is what classifies topological theory. The equivalent in two dimensions is a Frobenius algebra. I mean, these these cosets can also be seen as interfaces uh, between and when it's a, I think that interface is also a, a topological interface. So I also give you a nice way to realize the thing there. Yeah. That's, that's what my comment is. Yes, that's right. So you would have like an SO3 Simon's theory, two, 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 and there's an interface between them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, here. Well, I think yeah. That that's probably how you could get the Frobenius algebra. Here, you look at the theory on this in, of this interface, and it has some uh, lines and some uh, local operators, and those give you the Frobenius. But it's yeah, abstract nonsense. Uh, <laughs> that's I, I I agree with that. There is one complication, which is that in general, these are super uh, theories. They are fermionic theories. So it's a super Frobenius algebra, it's a super CFT, and, and et cetera. So maybe that's something that hasn't been as well studied as the bosonic case. So that means yeah, it's an extra ingredient that one has to take into account. What you say it's a, a, a formal nonsense? What, 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 what you said? No, no, I mean. <laughs> No, that a Frobenius algebra, it's the, the formal definition is just yes. a, a bunch of rules. That, that's it. Okay, but after but all, practice, after all is, is nothing special, right? Yeah, no. In practice, it's just a finite dimensional Hilbert space mm -hmm. with a finite number of, of states with some quantum okay. numbers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm.
Okay. So, uh, if there are no more questions, uh, we thank again the speaker.